Four things you must get right to sell what you make. Have you ever questioned if selling what you make with your hands could make you enough money to make it worth it? Maybe even quit your job one day? In 2017, when we were both full-time in the Air Force, we were flat broke. And we were looking for any way to make a little extra cash with our hobbies. We were buried in student debt and we felt hopeless because we couldn't make any more money at our jobs. Our friends kept telling us to sell the furniture that we made in our garage, but we just thought they were being nice. I didn't actually think that we could make enough money to make it worth it. We were afraid, we were anxious, we were really nervous, and honestly, we didn't even know where to start. We've talked to a lot of makers over the years, and I would venture to guess that 99% of makers feel the same way when it comes to selling what they make. But now, after six years of running and starting our businesses over and over again, we've made about half a million dollars doing this. If you were to tell me that's where we'd be when we first started, I don't think I would have believed you. And I would go so far as to say is, I think any maker could make a six-figure income just working out of their garage, selling what they make with their hands. The only reason they don't is that they don't know what skills they need to learn in order to run an effective business. But here's the beautiful part. Makers are amazing skill builders. You've literally already put in the time and effort to learn the hard part. You can make something beautiful and functional that somebody else wants to buy. But there are a couple of other skills that just need a tiny bit of training and you'll be rolling in money because your product will be head and shoulders above that of the competition. And that's why we're so excited that you clicked on this video and you're watching right now because we're gonna share with you the four areas of your business that you have to get right if you want to make money. Once you know what those four areas are, you'll be able to start making progress and you'll make money. You'll make more sales and you'll be able to find customers so much easier. And if one of these four areas isn't working, you just need to stop, address it, take a little bit of time to fix it, and start right back up again. So what are those four things? I want you to think about your business as a bus. And the four things you have to get right are the four wheels on this bus. And if something's not working, you've probably got a flat tire somewhere. I know this seems silly and out there, but it's the silly and out there metaphors that actually help you remember things. We pitched this to the stud stack uh, a couple of weeks ago, and oh my gosh, they ate this up. They're already improving their business using this tool. And I'm so, so excited to share that with you guys now. It's going to be so powerful when it comes to building your business and it's going to lighten the load on your shoulders. All right. So you and your family, you're on the business bus and the bus is going to take you wherever you want to go, whether that's uh, a vacation fund, whether you want to quit your day job, or maybe you just want to buy a few extra tools with the money that you make selling your work. Your business bus is, is trying to take you somewhere. And if you're not making the sales that you want to, or you can't find the customers that you want want to find, chances are you've got a flat tire and that can be really discouraging and deflating. And But I want you to be encouraged today because there are only four wheels on this bus. There are only four things to focus on, not 27, not 32. This is not a 48 step plan to build your business. It's just these four things. And the coolest part is that you're already doing them. You're already doing them. So here's the first wheel. We learned about this one when we first started our business. I, I remember every sale that we made, I knew exactly what tool I was going to buy next. And when I could buy a new tool, I could do a new thing. I could offer a new service, a new style, a, a new different way to make something else that the customer wanted. And I thought the more tools that I got, the more things I could make. I got a welder, I got a CNC, we got a router, we got a router table, I got a nicer table saw. I got every possible tool I could imagine and I could build anything. I could make whatever the customer wanted and I could build it stronger and better than anything else out on the market. And that's the first wheel on the business bus is your product. It's so important to get the product right. That's what's going to set you apart from the competition. You want to be able to give the customer something that's of the highest possible quality at a fair price. So after a while, we had a shop full of every tool imaginable. And we were selling things. I, albeit not as fast or as often as we wanted to, but we were selling things. Some really nice things. But it wasn't quite enough to make it worth it. We were barely breaking even. And I didn't want to break even. I didn't want to run a charity. I wanted to run a business. We could build just about anything, but we just didn't know where to get customers. I thought that if we built it, they would come. I thought if we built a really high quality product, it would speak for itself and sell out like hotcakes. And that's actually really bad business advice because that was not the case. <laughs> if you build it, they will come is a, a death sentence to a maker business because it's just not true. That's when I went to the local library. 
I, I threw my hands up. I said, I don't know what I'm doing. I went to the local library and I checked out every single book on sales and getting customers that I could, I could check out. And that's when I discovered the second wheel on the business bus, promotion. You've got to let people know that you exist. The tools that we use to build the product and even the product itself, they were important, but they weren't everything. Even a website. If you don't have traffic going to the website, nobody knows you exist. You have to promote your business. And all I mean by that is tell other people that you have services or products to offer them. And we weren't doing that. Yeah, we had a little bit of word of mouth. We were talking about it here and there, but we really weren't intentional about our promotion of our business. We were looking at tools like Facebook Marketplace and Etsy to help us sell our things, but we'd be really discouraged because we'd list it and it still wouldn't sell. And we thought, well, we listed it. Like, why is it not selling? And I venture to guess that you've probably felt the same way. You have to let the customers know you exist and you have to let them know that you're a better alternative to solve their problems than your competition. That's why we weren't selling things on Facebook Marketplace or why we thought Etsy was sort of a waste of time was because we were neglecting the fact that we have to promote it. Just because we put it on the platform doesn't mean it's automatically going to sell. We had to figure out how to get people's attention. We had to keep their attention and we had to, in a very portable way, show them how our product solved a problem. So if you've ever asked questions like, uh, how do I get more customers? Or who would want to buy this? Or I know I have a great product, but I just don't know who to sell it to. That's a flat tire on your promotion wheel. And this is great because as makers, our product is so good. Even just a little bit of, of work in the promotion area of your business will lead you so much more money. So many more customers, so many more sales, and so much more money. It's like magic. It'll just appear in your bank account. That's promotion. Letting your potential customer know how your product is going to solve their problem. And this is the one area where makers typically have a flat tire. I, we certainly did. And as we were learning this and we were getting really excited, we're like, okay, cool. I know how to promote a product. I've got a great product. I was so excited. Okay, the sky's the limit. We can go, we can do anything we want. That's when we took part-time jobs with the military and had a lot more time to focus on the business. So we moved down here to Houston and we were still working out of our garage, but we started our business over again for the second time in a new city. We had a great product and we had learned how to promote it, but we still weren't making enough money. But here's where we picked up a couple of really technical business books and they started talking about process. Where are my Lean Six Sigma fans at? <laughs> I know y'all are out there. When we started posting videos about process, man, you guys came in and helped a lot. The third wheel of the business bus is your process. So what I mean by process is everything involved from the customer being interested in your product to them getting it delivered to their house. That's your process. How do you make it? How do you ship it? How do you deliver it? How do you take payment? Do you accept returns? What are your policies? Do you allow customization? All of that is process. And when you're selling just a couple of things, it really isn't that super important. But if you want to start to grow your business and have a reliable stream of income that's easy for you to produce and deliver the products, you've got to really strip away anything from your process that isn't necessary. You have to answer the question, how do you not only sell a product to one person, but to a hundred people? And figuring out systems to do that is your process. This became the bottleneck for us in our business because we were still selling custom furniture and we were thinking really big, okay, how do I sell a hundred pieces of custom furniture in a year? Or how do I do 10 in a month? I realized that I couldn't make that much furniture in my garage. I realized that in my process in building custom furniture, I was spending more time moving tools around in the garage so that I could feed the lumber through with enough space than I was using the tools. I was playing Tetris with the tools just so I could use it for 30 seconds and then rearranging the shop again to use the next tool again for only 30 seconds. So that's when we learned that we needed to switch products. If we truly wanted to scale something, we were going to have to build something a little different. So we started our business over again for the third time on a product that we knew we could build a lot of out of the house. And that was cutting and charcuterie boards. That's how we got famous, I guess, on the internet for being the cutting board couple. 
We went all in on cutting boards and charcuterie boards. It was a great high quality product. It was promoted to the correct people. In Houston, there's a lot of businesses and so business professionals like to give gifts to one another as a thank you for doing business with them. So that's how we promoted our product and we had a process where we could build dozens and dozens of them at the same time. Time. and we were very excited. And half a million dollars and a 4,200 square foot warehouse later, we were in business. We thought we had it all figured out. We were like, all right, there's three parts to this whole business thing and we've nailed it. We've got a product, we've promoted it, we're figuring out our processes. We were making a ton of money. We thought, surely this is it. Let's just keep doing these three things over and over and over. And then we had a bus crash because we had a flat tire on the fourth wheel of our business bus. And we had no idea that this was coming. You guys saw our videos about a year ago. We were racing down the highway at 70 miles an hour. We were making so much money. We were building so many cutting boards. We were shipping so many. Everything was going well until we just crashed. Coming to work every day was miserable. And I'm embarrassed to say that because I was so excited. This was everything we wanted. It truly was. But why was my brain just shutting down when I went into work? Because the fourth wheel on the business bus is people. And we were doing a terrible job of taking care of ourselves, the people in the business. We were working way too hard. We were doing way too much and we weren't taking breaks. We weren't even paying ourselves. Every dime that we made in our businesses, we were reinvesting back into the business. We were paying employees. We were buying equipment. We weren't taking anything for ourselves. Because we thought, surely, watching our business grow is more than enough. That's all I'll need. But it wasn't. It was just grinding us to death. So once we realized this problem, we quit YouTube for a while. We started taking vacations. That's when we ran off to Mexico for about a week or so. And as a result of that burnout, we learned how to slow down and take care of ourselves. And that looks like taking more vacations throughout the year. That means taking breaks more often throughout the day and the week. That means eating healthier foods, getting more sleep, exercising. We weren't doing any of those things. <laughs> Now we are, look at that. <laughs> if the people in your business don't feel safe and secure working in the business, your business will not work. The people in your business can't be stressed for an extended period of time. I know starting a business can be stressful and scary, but that's all the more reason to take breaks and take better care of yourself because if you're stressed for too long, your body's gonna start to sabotage your business. So push hard, grind, have big goals, but also enjoy the process along the way. So now that we have air in all four of our tires and we've addressed areas that were flat, we are so excited about the direction that our business bus is headed. I've got more energy when I come in in the mornings. I'm excited about woodworking again. I don't have these like defeating thoughts invading my, my head space. I'm really excited about our next stage of business growth. And I know that we're gonna go a lot further before our next bus crash but you can be sure that we're gonna share with you everything that we learn along the way because that's why we make videos. This silly sounding tool, if you take the time to, to look at your business uh, using it, will help you move forward. I know your brain is already going crazy with different ideas and stuff. Maybe you've already clicked off this video and nobody's watching anymore, but we're gonna be using this business bus example in a lot of videos coming up soon. And we don't want you to miss any of the lessons because we'd hate for you to have a bus crash because you depended on the algorithm to, to show you the next video. So hit subscribe, hit the bell, and we will see you on the next one.